mirrorless myths. So we've had a lot of people write us and ask us questions about switching to mirrorless and some people have some misconceptions so we wanted to clear them up. Yeah, I hear things from people like, oh, I gotta upgrade to mirrorless before my DSLRs lose all their value. Or, oh man, I really think I need eye autofocus. We're gonna talk about what actually matters. And some people are gonna wanna switch to mirrorless and some people are gonna decide you're okay staying, staying with the DSLR. First, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. You need a web presence beyond just your social media. Head to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Start your 14-day free trial. You can set up a website from scratch just by dragging some pictures in. Pick one of their beautiful designs and you know it'll work perfectly across computers, tablets, smartphones, everything. Set up a store, schedule appointments with clients, and when you're ready, use the coupon code Chelsea and get 10% off. Thanks, Squarespace. So first, let's talk about how a lot of people think mirrorless cameras automatically have better image quality. They're newer, right? Yeah, well, I had someone write me recently and she said she wanted to switch from her Nikon D750 to a Z6 because she's a portrait photographer and she wants sharper pictures. And I think it's kind of a common misconception that people assume because they're newer, they must produce better pictures. And that's not always true. No, in fact, I still think our image quality king is the Nikon D850, a DSLR. Yeah. When I compared it to the mirrorless equivalent, the Z7 Mark II, the D850 in some ways has superior image quality. Like if you're recovering shadows and stuff, they look better because the Z7 Mark II will start to show banding because it's a mirrorless camera. It has to have like phase detect autofocus pixels in there and that can actually mess up the image quality in some ways. So you don't necessarily get better image quality. But no. then there's a flip side to this. Some of the new mirrorless lenses are sharper and that might do more to improve your image quality, but it's not because the camera body's mirrorless, it's just because they have new and better lenses. Yeah, so she actually did try to adapt one of her old lenses to it and the pictures came out worse. Mm -hmm. And she was devastated because she invested all this money into the camera. Um, but not new glass, and then the pictures were worse than her original setup. This is a heartbreaking story, because I know her example, she sunk thousands of dollars into it, and then she was struggling with like autofocus and sharpness and stuff. Her setup before was fine. She perceived that it was gonna be better, she was wrong, and now she's out thousands. But that doesn't mean that she shouldn't have switched. There are reasons for you to switch. So we're gonna go through what we think are the most common myths and misconceptions of mirrorless cameras and try to clarify them. They're often nuanced. There's often not black and white answers, but we're gonna do the best that we can. Okay, the next point is that mirrorless cameras are smaller. And this is often a myth. It's not always a myth. Yeah. But the origin of this is that when mirrorless cameras were new about a decade ago, they were specifically designed to address the clunkiness of all digital cameras at the time, which were based on full frame DSLR bodies. They were big and chunky, we're talking a decade ago. And so we had, for example, the Micro Four Thirds format come out. Olympus started making cameras that were designed for travel, for hikers. They were very small, the lenses were very small. And you constantly heard this message that mirrorless was smaller, mirrorless was the choice for travel. And uh, this isn't necessarily the case anymore. Yeah, and I think that it also became kind of a myth because when Sony was first coming out with a lot of their mirrorless cameras, do you remember people would be like, oh, it's like a toy, it's not a real camera, it's not for pros, it's so small. Yeah, you could only hold it with like your fingertips, there was no big grip on yeah, it Yeah, yeah, there were a lot of jokes about it and I think that kind of solidified in a lot of people's minds. And the point that I wanted to make with this is that, yes, mirrorless cameras do have the capability to be smaller, but once you get into like their pro lineups and a lot of the newer mirrorless cameras, they're not significantly smaller and you can kind of make a choice. If you want a small compact mirrorless camera, you can do that. You can find a very small mirrorless camera. If you want something that's substantial and you're concerned that a mirrorless camera won't be substantial enough for you to hold and feel pro, that's not a problem anymore. You can see my R5 here, if you're watching our video, it's still a big, clunky, meaty camera that fits nicely in your hand. Um, and then of course, once you start putting big lenses on it, there's almost no size difference between this and a DSLR. So let's talk about the lenses. This is a really common thing. 
people will be shooting with a 70 to 200, it wears their arms out. So they want to switch to mirrorless because they want to be able to hold the camera longer and not get tired on the sidelines. Mirrorless is not going to give that to you. A mirrorless 70 to 200 is pretty much the exact size and weight as a DSLR 70 to 200. The reason mirrorless cameras can have smaller lenses is that mirrorless cameras are thinner. It's, this is technical, but it's what call, what's called the flange distance, the distance from the sensor to the lens mount. There's no mirror in a mirrorless camera, so there that shrinks down. And thus, lens designers can put optical elements closer to the sensor, making the entire lens smaller. But if you look at a telephoto lens, the rear elements never get anywhere near the camera, and thus there's no benefit in lens size when switching to mirrorless. So when we compare the Nikon D750 with the 7200 to the Nikon Z6 Mark II with the 7200, very equivalent cameras, no difference. Please do not upgrade if you want it to be smaller. But if we look at wide angle lenses, that's a different situation because those wide angle lenses do take advantage of the shorter flange distance of mirrorless cameras. So if you're frequently shooting with a 16 to 35 and you want that to be smaller, Yes, mirrorless will probably get you a much smaller rig, assuming you upgrade both the body and the lens. Yeah, but then there's this whole other third scenario where some mirrorless uh, cameras just have the option of having a smaller lens. So I shoot with a Canon 800mm f11. There's no reason why they couldn't make it for a DSLR, but they just don't. Yeah. And so I have the option to do, use this really telephoto, light, small, compact lens. Um, but yeah, that's, that's not a quality of the mirrorless format itself. It's just an available option. Anyway, I wish that there's a really like simple answer about this, but you can clearly see it depends on your lens, it depends which body you're choosing, and it just depends on like the end setup that you have. It's not necessarily smaller, it could be. This, here's another myth that I still hear, that mirrorless cameras have worse battery life, that the batteries don't last as long. Listen, I lived through this. The early Sonys that we had, we would bring three, four batteries with us uh, when we traveled, and we'd go through all of them in a day, and it was very frustrating. I remember in Peru, we went out to a restaurant, had a couple of drinks. I came back to the hotel and just fell asleep, like we were jet lagged. Yeah. But what happened, I didn't remember to plug in and charge all four of my Sony A7R2 batteries. Yeah. I, I think I had one charged. And that battery was dead by like 10 a.m. the next day. And then I, I was out. I was like, I'm done shooting. I'm trying to like find a USB charger and get it to charge. And it was a nightmare. And right then I was like, this is unacceptable. I'm never doing this again. I think, did I have my D850 with me on that trip? I, I think so, and of course you could just shoot all day with that thing, it was fine. I was like smug. I have some memory of being smug, but it's not really a problem with newer mirrorless cameras. And again, this is one of those things where I wish I could give you a black and white answer. A lot of the newer cameras, the battery life is fine. The new Sonys, the battery life is great. They made bigger batteries, they last longer. I have a Canon R5, the battery life is fine. If you go and buy an older mirrorless camera used, it might be a camera that doesn't have very good battery life. So you'll have to look it up, but it's not, oh, it's not something that's holding back the entire mirrorless format anymore. Can I speak to the technical nerdy side of this a little bit? I love when you do that. There's this idea that DSLRs always have better battery life because they don't need electricity to power the viewfinder. They have this optical viewfinder. Mm -hmm. That's true. You can frame up your shot without even having the camera on. With mirrorless cameras, it always has to be on if you're using it. But the flip side is with mirrorless cameras, you, they never have to move a mirror. So each photo is physically doing less and that takes a little bit of juice. They can also use an electronic shutter so they don't have to move a mechanical shutter. And if we're using an electronic shutter on a mirrorless camera for something like sports, we actually find the mirrorless camera will have better battery life because it doesn't have to move as many parts around. It actually can be a little more efficient. Wow. Myth busted. <laughs> it really depends. I, each one of these that we go through, I'm like, oh, I, I just wish this was simple, but it is not. But we're going to explain. Okay, um, here's another myth. Mirrorless cameras have bad autofocus. And I think this is another one like the batteries that's like a holdover from the first cameras, the early cameras. Oh, they were bad. <laughs> they were really frustrating to try to focus with. And so many shots would just end up out of focus. Yeah. Yeah, that was really frustrating. But how's your R5? 
My R5 is great. The autofocus is amazing. The RP, on the other hand, I couldn't have used for wildlife. And here's the thing. It hasn't been very long. What's, what's it been, two years? Yeah, that was like 2018, 2019. Yeah, so it's been a really huge jump in, in like the technological advancement in these mirrorless cameras and the autofocus. So again, the newer mirrorless cameras, a lot of them, the autofocus is just as good as the DSLRs. The newer higher end ones. The newer higher end ones. If you get ones. an inexpensive one, it's still probably gonna be a step back from a DSLR. Yeah, so if you're not, if you have a DSLR and you're thinking about going to mirrorless for autofocus capabilities, you're only gonna see a benefit if you're going with the top end stuff, like an A1 or um, an R5 or something like that. If somebody comes to me and they want to spend a thousand bucks for sports or even two thousand bucks for sports, I'm still pushing them towards DSLRs because in that budget range, you get more with a DSLR. Oh, well, I'm, may I disagree with you a little bit? Existing photographers, I push them towards DSLR. New photographers, I push them towards mirrorless because of the, the EVF and like, I think it's a simpler transition from just going from your, your phone. You're right. Mirrorless cameras are easier to learn. I think more intuitive. For especially for smartphone users. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many people have seen our reviews of the latest Canon, Sony, Nikon cameras and found the eye autofocus just amazing. It's so cool when you see that it picks the eye out for a person or an animal and locks on. That's a sexy feature. Yeah. You see it. You see the benefit. It's fun. You see it working and you can understand the results. So I get why people want. IAF, but is it necessary? Do you need IAF? Do you need to spend thousands of dollars switching to get IAF? Probably not. What do you think? If you're a portrait photographer and you're shooting with a DSLR, ask yourself, am I struggling with autofocus? Is that holding me back? Would I get better pictures if autofocus was a little easier or a little faster? And it kind of depends on your style. Like if yeah. you're shooting really quick, if you're shooting events where you want to just capture a split second moment, maybe that eye autofocus will be a little more accurate or a little faster. But if you're doing slower studio portraits, if you have plenty of depth of field, mm -hmm. then your DSLR is going to be fine. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Unless you just want to have fun with a new feature and you've got money to burn, that's fine. Of course, I'm not judging that choice if you just want to play with the new features. But if you're trying to justify it as a financial decision for your photo business, then you, you probably don't need it. You're probably doing just fine with what you have. Yeah, and if you saw our Alpha 1 review and saw how amazing the eye autofocus is, don't think you can go pick up any old mirrorless camera with eye autofocus and you'll get that same experience. If you shoot with an older Sony or a Fuji or something, it's not gonna be as accurate and you might still be happier just moving the autofocus point around manually with a DSLR. It does get you spoiled though. Like you just, you change from horizontal to vertical format and it just refines the eye and you don't have to mess with the joystick. Yeah, I forget until I go back and try to take portraits with a DSLR and you have a kid moving around and you're trying to zoom and reframe <laughs> it and you're using a little thumbstick and they don't go out to the corners or anything. Yeah. Okay, maybe the focusing on mirrorless really is much better. <laughs> now we're like, oh, now we've got you very, very confused. We're sending mi mixed messages. Okay, coming up, we're gonna be talking about DSLR resale value because I know a lot of you were wondering if your gear is going to become obsolete. Will you be losing money? We're going to address that and Tony even did a little bit of nerdy research for you to try to inform you a bit. And we're also going to talk about what the actual switch is like. Is it really easy to switch from a DSLR to mirrorless? But first, we want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you need your own website, your portfolio, or if you just want a more professional place to host your pictures for your clients, Squarespace makes all of that super easy. Uh, they have password protected areas so you can send your clients there and that's professional. They have galleries available so that you can just have people buy prints of either your landscapes, your travel photos, or again, frame pictures for your clients. It's a great way to show off your work. It's a great way to look professional and it's really affordable and you can get a free trial for 14 days, no credit card needed. You just go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and if you decide to buy it, I think you will, use the coupon code CHELSEA to get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A, CHELSEA. It's not as easy to spell as Tony, but it's crucial you do that because if they give credit to Tony, I do die inside. 
What if you change your name to like Sam or something? I've considered it for coupon code purposes. <laughs> We're covering mirrorless camera myths, the reasons people are thinking about upgrading that aren't really true, and we hope to save you some money. We want to talk about frames per second with mirrorless cameras. Mm -hmm. Mirrorless cameras, let's get nerdy, they have the potential to have a much higher frames per second, the number of pictures you can take in a second. That's really important for wildlife and sports photographers. The reason they can be faster is DSLRs have that mirror that has to flip up out of the way every single time you take a picture, and that yes. takes a split second. And then they have a mechanical shutter that has to move out of the way. This all takes time. You have several mechanical parts. You're looking through the viewfinder, the mirror moves up, the shutter has to move. It just naturally slows things down a little bit. Yeah, mirrorless cameras like the Canon R5, the Sony Alpha 1, they can get rid of all of those parts. And thus, they can achieve 20 or 30 frames per second, as opposed to DSLRs, which max out at like 14 frames per second. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of people who see the specs for some mirrorless cameras and think that they're faster. And let's look at a specific example. The Nikon Z6 launched with an amazing 12 frames per second, which put it at the, uh, in line with the very best DSLRs that have ever been made. It is comparable in the DSLR world to the Nikon D750. Same megapixels, same approximate price point, but the D750 got about half that, or at only six and a half frames per second. So if you were to look just at the specs, you would think the Z6 would have been a much better choice than the D750, and you couldn't have been more wrong. And in fact, I talked to several people who made the leap to mirrorless based only on specs and ended up really disappointed. Well, this is where things get a little complicated because the Nikon Z6 technically does get those 12 frames per second. You could focus on a still object, hold down that shutter, and you would get 12 frames in one second. But that changes a little bit when you take your camera out into the real world, you're photographing your kids' sports games, you're trying to track them with the autofocus and take pictures, and if you go back and you count how many photos you actually get in that second, you'll find you're getting three or four frames per second instead of 12. But if you were to do the same test with your Nikon Z750, track your kid with autofocus and hold down the shutter button, you would get the six and a half frames per second that were advertised. So if you're practically using the camera, you get a lower frame rate. But if you're just holding it still on a still subject, yeah, you'll get 12 frames per second. That's so complicated, right? Well, that's why you really need to watch real world reviews where people yeah. take it out and test it and don't just read the specs to you. It's so important to find out how things work in reality. Testing cameras is difficult. Yeah. This is another area of subtlety, but camera manufacturers make it seem really simple to upgrade your DSLR to your mirrorless camera. Often they'll even package an adapter with the mirrorless camera so you can use all of your existing lenses. And they kind of look like your DSLRs, so you think you can just grab it and slap it on a lens and go. It's just not that easy. No, I mean, okay, there is a learning curve. It's a little bit different. So if I were a professional wedding photographer, I would not like use a mirrorless camera for the very first time and go photograph a wedding because I think that there is a bit of a learning curve um, and there's just a different process with taking photos. I remember I got an email from somebody who did exactly that. Oh, what? They upgraded to a new mirrorless camera and they were so excited that they went to shoot a wedding. And then they were like mad. It even seemed like they were mad at me because I had like this mirrorless camera. And I never would have recommended somebody just jump into something. But if you, especially if you're a pro, you should plan to get that new mirrorless camera and spend at least a week just getting familiar with it before you try to depend on it because it is a different world. Yeah, and it depends, again, it depends on the mirrorless camera you get. I know that I tried to use one for wildlife and the electric viewfinder had so much lag that I could not track any moving subjects. And I'm in the very fortunate position where I have a bunch of cameras around for testing, so it didn't hold me back. I just used a different camera. But if I had sold everything to buy that for wildlife, I would have been devastated. You also need to completely relearn how you use autofocus. Because with a DSLR, you have a different experience when you use the viewfinder and when you use the rear screen. Mm -hmm. The viewfinder experience is completely gone. You have this single experience, which allows you to switch between the viewfinder and the rear screen on mirrorless cameras. 
and usually the rear screen focusing is better. You can just touch to focus and you can rely on that. But at the same time, it might not be quite as snappy as your DSLR. It might not track movement quite as well. And those are things you can probably learn to work around, but it's going to take you some practice. You also have to get used to the idea that you can focus to the edges of the screen. But these mirrorless cameras have like 400 autofocus points, so you don't want to be selecting them with a thumbstick like you would with a DSLR. So instead, you'll pull your face away and you'll tap the subject and let it sort of track it wherever it is on the screen. So you have to train yourself to use mirrorless autofocus in a completely different way. And it's hard to unlearn stuff. That's a really good point, Tony. Even when I got my Canon R5, and it's a great camera and I like it a lot, um, the autofocus system works so much differently than my D850 that I had to configure it in a really personal way. I made a video on that if you're curious if you want to learn a little more about that. But when I was trying to autofocus on animals, it would lock onto something that was not the animal and I couldn't get it to let go. And so I had to program a, a button to like single point autofocus. So I have this dual autofocusing thing I do for wildlife. And if I had had a job the next day or a crucial shoot the next day, I wouldn't have known that and I would have missed a lot of shots. So when you're making that switch, just be aware that you might have to relearn some new things about your camera and kind of shift and adjust the way that you're shooting. You might also change how you maintain your gear. DSLRs, because they have that mirror that always flips down and protects the sensor, they gather very little dust. That has not been our experience with mirrorless cameras, with the exception of Canon cameras, which do tend to cover the sensor. Mine has a little thing that comes down and covers the sensor. Yeah, it depends on the model. Mm -hmm. But Sony cameras, they gather so much dust. And if there's an important shoot, you really need to pull out your sensor cleaner and clean it every single time. Even then, I will often have dust by a couple of hours into a shoot because it will be collecting it in real time. Somehow, even if I don't change lenses, I'll end up with dust on there. Yeah. Whereas we've never cleaned the sensor on the Canon R5 or our other camera. We've never done it in years of service. Yeah. I know some people are good about that. That was a weakness of mine, remembering to clean the sensor. It's just something I never remembered to do. Yeah, so if you're the type where you're like, I'm never going to clean a sensor, you might be happier just sticking with your DSLR. Um, didn't newer Sonys add that front curtain thing? The Sony A1 and the Sony A9 have it, but the okay. other Sony cameras do not. And I think even like the Canon RP and Canon R, I'm not sure they cover the sensor. They should do it on all of them. I love that feature. Yeah, if it reduces dust, dust is the worst. The worst <laughs> is when you've just taken 300 portraits of somebody and they all have a big blob of dust <laughs> that you have to go in and clean up. Or when you don't see it until you like do like... F-22 for landscape or something, and then it's just all dust. You're like, oh, shoot. Yeah, very true. As, and in video, where you simply, you just have to crop it out. There's just no cloning it out. Here's another myth or misconception. That's that mirrorless is not more expensive. And I think people think this because mirrorless bodies are actually very competitively priced, especially Sony. I feel like Sony started this where the bodies are a reasonable price and the lenses are very expensive. And oh, now Canon and, and Nikon have full frame mirrorless cameras for under $1,000. Yeah. That's a great price. I actually don't think that this is a bad strategy, not just for the company, but for the consumer. I like that people can get really great bodies for less expensive and mm. then decide how many really expensive lenses they want. But um, you just have to be aware if you're looking for a comparable price, you want to spec out everything that you want. So choose your body and your lens or lenses, whatever you might want, and see how much the full system is. And then you might also need to buy other things like um, if you're switching to a new camera and it has a different type of card, your memory card might be more expensive. You might need a few of them. You might need a, a few extra batteries, um, just, just accessories and things like that. Another thing, with DSLR gear, you can probably get it used, lenses and bodies. Mm -hmm. But with mirrorless gear, there's not as many on the market because they haven't been around as long, so you might end up buying it new. And that means you're going to be paying just a new tax on it. Yeah. And in related news, I got a message from somebody saying they wanted to upgrade to mirrorless before their DSLR gear lost all of its value. Yeah. Because they saw Canon, Nikon, Sony, all these companies discontinuing their DSLR equipment. And for some reason, they equated that with nobody wanting to buy their used gear. I think that that's actually a pretty reasonable conclusion to draw. They might think that nobody is going to want DSLRs anymore, and then I'm going to be stuck with all of this gear. It's going to lose all of its value if I don't switch right away. 
I'm a math guy. I make spreadsheets all the time, right? Yeah, you're good at it. So I made a spreadsheet, and I looked up about 20 different pieces of mirrorless and DSLR equipment and tracked their values over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And what I found was when a system was discontinued, there was not a drop in price. In fact, when a company stops making a new piece of equipment, the used value for that often goes up because they have eliminated the supply but they've not eliminated the demand. Hmm, I've There's seen still... that in other markets too, like Porsches. <laughs> <laughs> so, like us, just relatable like us. stuff that everybody understands. I don't have a Porsche. I just like to look at them and they never lose their value. And so something similar happens with DSLRs. People know that they want the DSLR and the lens and they don't, if they're not making it anymore, then you have all of these people forced to buy them on the used market. They can't go just buy a new one, so they're retaining their value on the used market. So your DSLR value is not going to plummet. Um, of course, we can't tell the future. You know, This is a decision that you're gonna have to make on your own, but we think with our research, it's not gonna just drastically lose value and, and uh, have you losing all that money. It should be okay. It's gonna... yeah. Look, if you're just trying to find an excuse to upgrade, like go ahead and upgrade, you have my permission, yeah. but don't do it because you think it's gonna save you money. No, it's definitely gonna cost you money to upgrade. Oh yeah, people are gonna be mad if we take away all of their excuses to drop mad cash on their new mirrorless camera. If that's what you want, you just do it. No excuses needed. Okay, mirrorless is newer and therefore mirrorless is better. A lot of people think this, that's a logical conclusion to draw. And you know what? I really like mirrorless technology. I think it allows for some really cool features. I definitely see the benefit. But if you are not gonna be dropping a ton of money on the latest and the greatest features and the highest line cameras like the R5 or the A1, uh, then you might not see a ton of benefit. So just keep that in mind. Compare the specs like we've talked about. Uh, consider the overall cost of switching and see if it's right for you. And feel free to just wait another year or two mm -hmm. until these new technologies trickle down into the more mid-level, mainstream, and entry-level cameras. Yeah, you guys know I sell my cameras every 23 seconds. You're going to be able to buy a used R5 soon. So... <laughs> I want to hear in the comments down below what you guys think. Like, if you upgraded, what things actually disappointed you about mirrorless cameras? What were you expecting that didn't end up coming true? And thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace, who makes websites really easy to set up. You could create a portfolio just by picking a design and dragging some pictures in, and you'll know that it's going to look awesome, and you'll be able to book appointments with clients and sell prints. The sky is the limit with Squarespace. What's the first thing you do when you look up a business? Because I go look at the website. Yes, and you know what I hate is when they force me to go to their Facebook page or their Instagram. And it's chronological and you just want some piece of information, but they posted about it two weeks ago. You want all of the information to be professional and at your fingertips and in a nice organized menu bar and you can do that for your clients. Look professional. It's, it's so inexpensive and you can even try it for free. So go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and if you want to buy it, and I think you will, use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. It's a great investment. It really Thank you, is. Squarespace. Bye. Bye.